Hi friends, it's Valerie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to this week's What's For Dinner. If you are new here, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button and join my YouTube family. And don't forget to leave a like or a comment down below because it really does help my channel. Uh, this week's What's For Dinner might be out a day later than I intended. So not Sunday like normal, it might be out Monday. I will still try to get it out Sunday if I can, but I've been gone all day to a wedding on my editing day on Saturday here. So it's three in the morning now. I got just got home. I'm cold, tired, but I wanted to jump on here and say hi and uh, mention a favorite of the week, which is the Philly cheesesteak French bread. It's open faced. Um, I've made it in the past, maybe like a year and a half ago, but it's a favorite of mine. It's delicious and it's super easy to make. Uh, that's the best part. But anyways, let's just get started. To start this off, I'm going to take some of this albacore chunk white tuna. I'm going to need about 12 ounces of tuna and I'm just however many cans that equals for you. And I'm adding that to a bowl. To that, I'm adding one fourth cup of mayonnaise. Uh, this calls for a cup of frozen peas and carrots. I had some mixed vegetable. I'm just trying to use up. It's not even a cup's worth, but I'm going to add it in. I'm going to be serving vegetables on the side, but I still added this in to use it up. Then to that, I'm also adding one and a half teaspoons of dried minced onion and a teaspoon's worth of Italian seasoning. The recipe also calls for a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I'm not a big fan of that, so I added a teaspoon's worth, and actually next time I will just keep that out. Um, I almost forgot to add the cheese to this, but it does call for half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I just added what I had left, gave that all a good stir. Then you'll need some crescent roll. Um, you're just going to open that up and take all the little triangles and uh, make a ring with that. It kind of looks like a sun and I put the widest part to the middle and you're just kind of trying to make that circle in the middle. It's not going to be perfect. Um, then I just kind of press together all those edges. I had a little piece of extra dough here. I'm just kind of pressing into some of the thinner parts. And then we're just taking that tuna and vegetable mixture and putting that on the thickest part of the crescent ring here. Um, just trying to keep it in that area as you see like a nice just ring. And then we're going to take the points of each of the crescent rolls and kind of just pull them in and tuck them under. Uh, just do that with all of them. Repeat all that process and try not to keep the dough like too thick in one area because it will bake like be undercooked in those areas if you like ball the dough up too much in one area like one area i went ahead and baked this at 375 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes until it was nice my preferred amount of golden brown i like peas and carrots with like my tuna casserole typically so i decided to have peas and carrots with this and then charlie likes mixed vegetables so i went ahead and um served that for him and this it just plated up like i said next time i won't add the dijon i didn't care for that flavor profile with it all um but i do love tuna and vegetable typically so it was nice on the crescent roll a nice delicious flavor pairing very well together my fast food choice of the week was el pollo loco i really enjoyed their tostada bowl i got the double chicken tosada. I really have been enjoying this a lot. So um, I could really eat al boyo loco like many times a week. Like just the freshness um, is really something that I enjoy a lot. For this, I'm starting off with a little bit of oil in the bottom of a large skillet over medium high heat. I've taken one kielbasa. I like to half mine and then cut it. Um, and I like to brown this quite a bit. Now at this point, that's your preference. However browned you'd like to get this, just go ahead and do that. And once you've got that brown to your liking, um, I went ahead and diced up some onion. It's about, uh, it calls for a cup and a half's worth. I just ha used up whatever I had adding that in, giving it a stir, gonna let that become a little bit translucent. Then I'm adding in about two to three cloves worth of garlic. I'm just using the squeeze kind here, going to mix that together, let that garlic become fragrant just about 30 seconds or so. And then I'm adding in a can of Rotel, which is the diced green chilies and tomatoes, as that's a 10 ounce can. And then two cups of chicken broth, going to season that with some salt and pepper about a half a teaspoon of each of those i gave that all a good stir normally i use penne in this it's eight ounces of penne so half a box and uh this time i didn't have any penne so i use zd pasta so i'm just kind of pressing that down into the liquid so we can help that go ahead and cook 
and I also almost forgot to add the heavy cream, but I'm adding half a cup of heavy cream, not really stirring that, just pouring it evenly across. If you only have whole milk, you can also substitute it for that. I placed the lid on that. I am letting that cook on like medium low for about 15, I like to do closer to 20 minutes. I like the doneness of the pasta at that point, but you can taste test a piece of pasta and check it to your liking. It's gonna be a little bit liquidy still, and then I'll add some cheese. It's about a cup's worth of Monterey Jack cheese, and that will help thicken that up. I just serve this with a side Caesar salad. This is always a pasta dish that I really, really love a lot. I'm not the biggest fan of kielbasa, like too much but I really like it in this it gives the pasta a great flavor um, so I highly recommend that a lot I'm starting this off by taking this package of shaved beef it is a 14 ounce package that I'm using here the recipe does call for ribeye eight ounces uh, sliced thinly but uh, you can use whatever steak works best for you I like this thin shaved one and then I'm seasoning that with a quarter teaspoon of salt and about an eighth teaspoon of black pepper and just kind of like letting that cook up until there's no pink remaining on that I did break up some of that meat because I do want it to spread out a little bit I'm also adding in one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and uh, some of this prime steak seasoning from Kinder's, adding some of that as well to give it some extra flavor. Uh, I thought that would really enhance that and it did. I really enjoyed the flavor of that added to it. Gave that a stir. Once it was done cooking, I removed it from the pan. Then I've added two tablespoons of butter to that pan now. And I'm going to add in some cut up bell peppers, like one green bell pepper sliced, one yellow onion sliced, and then it calls for four ounces of mushrooms, but I just used um, like the whole container. I don't know if it was like six to eight ounces, somewhere in there. And those are sliced as well. I'm seasoning those with some more um, salt, about a quarter teaspoon and about an eighth teaspoon of pepper as well. And the recipe doesn't call for garlic powder, but that's a must for me. So I just sprinkled some of that in there to my liking. I'm going to just stir this all together and let these vegetables cook up about three to four minutes until they're like browned up a bit, softened a bit as well. And now I'm taking my French bread. Uh, I had a whole loaf, but I knew we didn't need that. So I just uh, took the portions that we were going to be using at this moment and I spread the mayonnaise on it. Now in total, if you were doing the whole French loaf, it calls for a third cup. I didn't really... Like measure I just kind of eyed a nice like layer of mayonnaise onto each of the French bread pieces that I have here and then I'm going to top that with some provolone cheese uh, about three slices fit onto mine um, I'm pretty sure you'll use the whole eight ounce package if you're doing the whole French bread and then I just am putting the meat again I'm just doing a portion for this so I'm just kind of eyeing what I think looks good on there so I just put some meat stacked it with some of those vegetables um, and the recipe doesn't call for this, but I like to add mozzarella on top. Not only is it delicious because I love extra cheese, but I kind of feel like when the cheese melts, it holds those vegetables together a little bit better as well. And I went ahead and baked this at 375 degrees for about 15 minutes. Just keep an eye on that the last five minutes, especially if your oven runs hot like mine, um, just until it's nice and brown and the cheese is melted on top. Honestly, y'all, this was a late dinner and I didn't have the energy to put anything with this. So I just had this by itself. It was very filling and super delicious. We love this. We've had it in the past multiple times. It is really, really good. And I just love how easy it is as well. Now, there's nothing really to this because I don't make this like homemade at all, but I do just throw together two of these uh, like 25 ounce cans of like canned menudo and I add one 25 ounce can of hominy because I like the ratio of that. I just like to sprinkle some oregano in there because I like the taste of that and it's pretty easy. Just heat it up and it's good to go. I like to serve it with cilantro, onions, and limes and then I always like to have flour tortillas and butter on the side. Like I just love that combination like dipping it into the juice of the soup but um, this is something I can always throw together like under 10 minutes it's so easy and we enjoy it a lot ramen is something i can eat very regularly and this night i was just making something for myself and it sounded really good so i just take basically my favorite instant ramen i didn't get a video of this um i just remember to take a picture really but yeah i cook up my instant ramen that i like i like to add like green onion or spinach things like that if i have them on hand um but i didn't have any spinach this night but i took some already cooked shrimp i just 
threw some of those in there. I like some soft boiled eggs and then I made like pot stickers, added those in um, just to like beef it up a bit. These were like pork and chicken ones, so add a little extra protein. And then I just put like sesame seeds and green onions. It's really simple, but it's super, super good. I love ramen. Thanks so much for watching friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all have a great day.